late um, prayer meeting, prayer time on Tuesday evening. Good am. Pastor was so kind and gave me a book that Nancy Dufresne had uh, written called Ooh. The Supernatural Prayer Life. Wow. And um, I'm just going to share a little bit out of uh, chapter 7 with regard to um, edifying ourselves and praying in, in the tongues, praying in the Holy Ghost. And we can't hear that enough and we can't be told enough that that's what we should be doing is praying in the Spirit. So she said, um, she gives a scripture, 1 Corinthians 14, 4, that talking, speaking in an unknown tongue edifies or it improves us. So I found this interesting because I didn't, I didn't know this, but maybe some people know. She said, in looking in Webster's Dictionary for a, de a definition of the word edify, she said, I found several. But when Daniel Webster first wrote the dictionary, mm -hmm. he used many Bible scriptures. Yeah. Uh, for his definitions, and he referenced those scriptures in in his definitions. But over time, the they have taken and those those scriptural references are no longer in in the um, dictionary. But she had a copy that went back to the 1800s. Yeah, and so she used it in um, defining edificate of of uh, speaking in tongues. And there's seven of them, and I'm only going to do three of them tonight, but um, they're interesting. Um, and they're, it's good for us to go over them again. Like, I'm sure we've all heard these before, but it's good to just go over and, and to, um, to motivate ourselves to pray more in the Spirit. Um, the first definition of, um, that she found is kindle. The word kindle is... Um, is one of the definitions of um, edification. And to kindle a fire is to ignite a fire or to throw wood on it. And I think I spoke one night about um, something to do with the fire and whatnot. And, it, and so I knew that the, to kindle what the kindle, what it meant. And she, he, he that speaks in a known tongue ignites the fire of God in our lives. Wow. So that we're burning hot for God and we don't burn lukewarm. Wow. Um, in Revelations, you remember that that they talk about to the to the church yeah. that you're neither hot or no neither cold nor hot. And I would that you were cold or hot. So because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. And she said that in this passage. Jesus is speaking spiritually cold is better than being spiritually lukewarm. At first, we might not understand that. We might think that if we're lukewarm, that's better than, than being cold. But um, we have to consider how does something become warm. And it had, so lukewarm, you once had heat applied to it. And that heat was removed or it was lost. And we can take that in our law, in our Christian walk that at one time we were hot, we were hot on fire for the Lord. And then something happened, uh, situations, circumstances, and we lost that, that desire and that um, hotness, as to say, for the Spirit from God. And he would rather that we be cold and never were lukewarm, um, and that we never had the fire of God, and um, that we never had that measure of God's, fire to be cut off. It says in Timothy 1.6 to stir up the gift of God. And um, so we need to kindle, to stir up that gift that uh, that is in us. And how do we keep the fire of God, the gift of God stirred up? By speaking in tongues. Um, then serving with the fire of God. He that speaks in an unknown, unknown tongue also kindles himself in the ministry of God that God has called you to. Um, you're burning hot in the direction to which God has called you and to the ministry he's called you to if you're, if you're praying in tongues a lot. A man who takes time to speak in other tongues won't become unfaithful in the ministry. Um, a man who takes time won't become bored with the ministry. 
and he's that he's cultivated. Out of boredom, he won't start wandering away to the office, of, away from the office that God has called him to. Like you don't really, I mean, maybe some people do, but myself, I don't really don't think about that until you read that from yeah. somebody yeah. else. That maybe if I'm bored, maybe if I've, you know, wandered away, yeah. that we're not praying in tongues enough, right? Yeah. Um, so it's something to guard against. Mm -hmm. A believer who speaks in other tongues keeps himself hot in serving in the ministry, helps physicians in the church. Yeah. So you don't have to be a pastor. You don't have to be doing anything from the pulpit or from the, the platform. Just the ministry of helps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you're not praying enough in the Holy Ghost, then um, you'll become bored with that mm -hmm. and unfaithful. Um, but his serving will be an example if we if we pray in tongues. We'll be an example to those, and it will stir God. I mean, even people who are are uh, at the door. I mean, if you're hot on fire for God, people are going to see that. They're going to feel that. They're going to they're going to experience that when they come through the door. It pleases God when those who serve Him are hot for Him, and that they're aglow and burning with the Spirit. Um, tongues, speaking in tongues will keep you hot in every arena of your life. Wow. God has provided for us uh, what he has provided flows freely and easily for those who fellowship with the Father and who speak it, who pray in tongues. Also, one of the definitions, um, she said she looked up, kindle also means to bring forth young. And Isaiah 66, 8 tells us that for as soon as Zion, the church, prevailed, she brought forth children. So we can see through the help of the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues that it plays a role in bringing forth spiritual children. Speaking in tongues plays a role in spiritual babies being born into the kingdom of God. She says, prayer doesn't save people. Jesus is the Savior, and he's already accomplished that work. So um, if we cooperate with the Holy Spirit and pray in tongues, the power of God that's offered to every man for salvation will flow, and it will make it easier to, for people to be saved. The next definition she talks about is to build. He that speaks in an unknown tongue builds himself. And she talks about Smith Wigglesworth. Um, he said, I am a thousand times bigger on the inside than I am on the outside. Yeah. He was saying that his spirit was so much larger than his body and his life showed the fruit of that project. He had thousands of miracles and healings and a work of divine power flowed from his large spirit. So speaking in tongues plays a vital role And a large spirit has an enlarged capacity for God's power and ability. Amen. You can hear the largest largeness of a man's heart just by the way he walks with God and his words sound different. They carry a weightiness. Your words of power and revelation will seem to strike a chord in people's spirits. And we see that so much, right? His words will land in you with such force and power that they won't leave you in a place that they found you. Uh, so speaking and praying in tongues does a lot of things. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He that speaks in an unknown tongue builds himself. It takes longer to build something than it does to tear it down, right? right. So it takes more effort to build it. But um, the results are more are worthwhile with, with building ourselves up and praying in the Holy Ghost. It's worth whatever it costs. The building process that takes a place in man through speaking in that won't happen overnight. It takes faithfulness, and we have to make it a lifestyle. He will make giant strides in his spiritual life, and his progress will be apparent to all of those around him. Um, Psalms 127.1 talks about, Except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain that build it. But the house can refer to a man's spirit, mm -hmm. a man's life, and a man's ministry. 
God wants us that it must be by his ability and not by our ability, but by God-given spiritual ability. Yes. When we take time to speak in other tongues, we're employing supernatural divine help and we're cooperating with the divine helper. We're tapping into his thoughts and plans of God and we utilize his almightiness. What a building it will become when he does the building. What a place of honor and glory and power for our Father to throw, flow through us when we allow him to build, to build us, to build the house. The building of a man's spirit, his life, his ministry purpose is not done by a human natural might and power, but by God's spirit. And she said, as a mother, she said, um, I, I can only build in these areas successfully as I do them by the spirit. And, she, and of course, the scripture, Zechariah 4, 6, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. She said, before she ministers, she spends hours sitting quietly and speaking in other tongues. So that she, before she said, before I can edify the people, I must be edified. Mm -hmm. And she studies God's word all the time. She said, um, "If I sp I spent a few hours prior to the service hooking up my tongue to my spirit." Mm -hmm. And uh, I know we've heard many times, all the time, pray in the spirit on Sunday afternoons, right? Mm -hmm. So that we can know God's heart. We can know. What direction, and, and that's not just for pastor, that's for us all yeah. to spend time. Because we all need to know what God's saying, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. um, I minister out of my spirit as opposed to my head. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And she said the word ministered will reach deep down into people's spirits. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking in other tongues is the door to the supernatural, and we know that. Um, but through speaking in tongues, we make our spirits sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Those who take time to speak much in other tongues will have gifts of the Spirit flowing more freely. Mm -hmm. um, I've had some wonderful experiences with God, she says, in prayer as a result of taking time to pray in tongues. And she gives a couple of examples, and, and one of them I think I've told before here um, about a tragedy that was averted with a young child. She said she was praying before she went to sleep one night, and and this young child, she saw a one-year-old boy mm -hmm. with a very unsteady walk wander into the driveway and mm -hmm. stop behind a silver truck. Yeah. And while he was standing there, I saw a man climb into the truck and um, not knowing that the baby was out there. There was a party um, that was going on, and, and this child had somehow got out of the house without them knowing, and the, this man was leaving early from the party and didn't know the child was out there. Mm -hmm. So she said, I can she said, when I saw that, she bound the spirit of death from off that child in Jesus' name. Yes. And I loosed the power of God and angels of God to protect that child. Mm -hmm. So she said, I continued to pray in tongues after she had prayed in English. And she said, I sensed a release, so she went to sleep. And she said, when God showed me that that child was run over, he didn't just show it to me so that I could say I saw it. He showed it to me so that I would exercise my authority over it and get it changed. Yeah. And we have authority over the enemy and we can abort the enemy's plans. Yes. Um, so later on she um, I guess I'll just, she tells the rest of the story, but we are co-laborers with God and God's part is to supply the authority and power but our part is to exercise the authority. Yep. And if we don't exercise our authority, it won't get exercised. Mm -hmm. And if we don't, we will, God will allow what we allow and he will permit what we permit. Mm -hmm. Some Christians are waiting on God to do something with the devil, but he's already done it. Mm -hmm. So God showed me that that child being run over by the truck so that I would exercise my authority over the enemy and although I was praying in other tongues when I saw that child, I didn't use tongues to deal with the devil. Right. When we're speaking in other tongues, and we all know, know this, but it's a good reminder just to remind us, we're talking to God, not right. the devil. Right. The devil does not understand what I'm saying when I'm speaking in other tongues. Mm -hmm. 
where I'm speaking God talk. It's a language that's between me and my father. We don't deal with the devil with um, speaking in other tongues. We right. deal with him, right. exercising our authority over Amen. him. So about four months later, she was in a service that going on with this story and a midweek service in her church. And um, she was telling the congregation about what she saw. And this woman stood up and said, Pastor, can I say something? And so this woman was from another church, but was too far, she was working around where Nancy's church was, and it was too far for her to go home throughout the week to a, like a, a midweek service. So she went to Nancy's church on, through the midweek. And she said, I take care of my pastor's grandchildren. And I was with them a few weeks ago when there was a staff party at the pastor's house for Christmas. The pastor's one-year-old grandson got out of the house and was walking in the driveway behind a silver truck that belonged to a staff member. And he left early and went and got in his truck and he didn't see the child. He backed the truck up and ran over something, not knowing what it was, he pulled forward over it again and then got out to see what he had hit. When he got out of the truck, he saw the one-year-old boy laying in the driveway with tread marks on his abdomen and his legs. The little boy got up and ran into the house and showed everybody the tread marks oh that was on his bar, completely unharmed. Mm -hmm. wow. So if she hadn't have prayed yeah. and did what God showed her, then that little boy probably would have died. Well, Amazing. no doubt would have died. She said, I was praying another night um, before going to sleep, and she saw two cars collide, and one vehicle hit the other one on the driver's side. So she said, when I saw that, she said, I told Satan, take your hands off that situation. I bind the spirit of death, and I loose the power of God and angels to be around that situation. She said, I took a few more minutes to pray and then felt that the situation was okay, so she went to sleep. About two weeks later, she received a phone call from somebody that said there had been an accident involving an acquaintance of hers. A drunk driver had hit this person on the driver's side so hard that the top of the car blew off. Whoa. When the emergency team arrived on the scene, and saw the car, they pulled out the body bag because they didn't think that there was anybody that could have ever survived that accident. And they had to cut away a car to get the person out and he had minor injuries. Wow. So, so, so again, it's praying in the spirit and, and God showing her those things averted somebody dying. Yeah. She gives another story and and, um, and it's always at night as she lay in her bed. So the Lord, a lot of times she must, she must before she goes to sleep, um, the Lord must show her things. She said she was in, standing in a small hallway of an old worn out, like worn house. And the walls in the hallway were white and the carpet was gold. And there were two doors that led down the, the hallway and those doors went off into other rooms. And she said, I walked past the first door and went down to the second. And then in the second room, she saw a woman that was bound by her hands and her legs to a bed. She said, I knew that woman had been held captive for a long time and was being repeatedly abused. She said, I spoke to the devil and I told him to take his hands off the situation and I told him to let the woman go free. Like this is all she, this is all she said. Like sometimes we get into doing a lot of stuff and saying a lot of stuff, but that's all she said. She said, I fell off to sleep. Two days later, she said, I was ministering in a church nearby, and I was like, as I was teaching our prayer that night, she said, I felt to tell this story. The next day, a woman who had been present in the service called one of her staff members and said, have you seen the news today? There's a story on the news channels of a woman who had been kidnapped 20 years ago and has just escaped. Wow. She said, I knew that that was the woman mm -hmm. that I had prayed for. Yeah. Wow. When God finds those who will cooperate with him in prayer, he, you will or I will be invited 
to move by his power in the lives of those who need his help. So praying in tongues mm -hmm. is vital oh, to yeah. being used in that area. I didn't, she, um, and then she talks about pastoring by the Spirit and, and even her children, how they raise their children, parenting by the Spirit, and how she knew, she prayed for every situation. She prayed over the kids that, um, that hung around with her kids and whatnot, and, and just, she said, that's how, that's how they wrote, raised their kids, and that's how she ministers mm -hmm. and, and pastors. Um, the third de uh, definition that Webster gives is to organize. And he speaks in an unknown tongue, organizes himself. Yes. There's an order with everything. There's an order to everything. And there's an order in our, in our services, right? And we all know that. And there's an order that, that hinders the spirit. And there's an order that caters to the moving of the spirit. And we are to carry the order in our lives that caters to the moving of the Spirit. We don't want so much order that the Spirit is pushed out with because we see that in, in churches that there's so much order, say this, 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 we sing three songs, we just, but we don't want that much, but we want the kind of order that builds a platform yeah. for the Spirit to move, you know, and in church services, our order can confine or limit the Spirit is, um, our our order can confine or limit what the spirit is able to do. And the Pharisees, the the, top, the parable or the um, about the man with the withered hand, like the Pharisees, they didn't like the Lord. Well, they didn't like him, but he he didn't keep an order. Like when he when he ministered, like he he did how he was led by 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 God, right? So he. He, in his services, would do things that they, they didn't want him doing. Mm -hmm. And um, he intruded and upset their order. Mm -hmm. yeah. But Jesus' order of following the Spirit set aside the man's order and it carried out God's plan. So when we speak of definition organized, we're referring to the kind of order that allows God's Spirit to move. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, God wants to move in our church services and not only must the minister be sensitive but the worship leader and and she also says the ushers must be sensitive um, and then she tells a story about Kenneth Hagin and she talks about the order even in a five-fold ministry like that can things can happen that um, that can be out of order not organized, and Kenneth Hagin tells a story of an incident in his life that he fell and he injured his arm. And the pastor of the church put him in his car and took him to the hospital. And while they were driving to the hospital, the Lord spoke to him and told him, he, he said, not to worry about what had happened. He said that he would speak to him about it later. So while he was in the hospital, uh, Brother Hagin heard footsteps coming down the hallway. And the door opened, and he assumed it was a nurse, but when he looked, it was Jesus. For an hour and a half, Jesus talked to him about many things, but one of the things he said to him was it was not him who caused the accident, but he permitted it. And he went on to explain that in a church service two years before, Brother Hagin had announced to a congregation that he was called to be a teacher and a prophet. And the Lord told him, he said, he announced, when he announced that, he got out of his, the perfect will of God for his life. And he, were, he moved into the permissive will. Jesus had instructed Brother Hagin that he was called first to be a prophet yeah. and then a teacher. Yeah. Not a teacher and a prophet. And he had gotten the, the offices reversed. Jesus explained to him that the prophet's office is a higher office. And the, than the teachers, and therefore by reversing the order of the two offices, he had put the lower office above the higher office. And he told Brother Hagin that he was laying more emphasis on the lower office than he was the higher. And um, Jesus told Brother Hagin that he should be glad that he had permitted the accident to arrest his attention so that he could talk to him about 
the change he needed to make. If Brother Hagen had not made it made that correction, then um, by being out of God's will, he would have opened the door to the enemy, and Satan would have been able to cause him to die prematurely in his mid fifties. And he tells that story, and I believe in visions. So disobedience opens the door to the enemy, and they're um, outside of God's perfect will. That we are under God's perfect protection, right? There's protection when you're in the in the perfect will of God. So speaking in other tongues helps us to gain clarity in our spirits, so that we know the offices that we're to stand in, and to keep them in proper order, and not try to be in somebody else's office or whatnot, but to be and to stay in the office that God has called us to be, and um, then you're in God's perfect will, and. He, in speaking in tongues, we get clearer vision for what God has for us, right? So that's what I have tonight, but it's just, um, it's good to just go over some things that's praying in tongues. And I was reading something at um, Global Prayer Alert thing, and it says that, in that, it says that if we aren't seeing changes in our life, that we're not spending enough time with God. We have to spend more time praying in the Holy Ghost and spending time in the Word mm -hmm. and spending time with Him. Yeah, can you go over one of the statements you made right at the very start? You said something that says, uh, He that speaks in tongues ignites the fire of God. And then there's some more. Um, to, to kindle uh, is to ignite a fire and to throw wood on it to keep it burning. He that speaks in an unknown tongue tongue ignites the fire of God and keeps himself burning hot for God. So he doesn't become lukewarm. We, we stay hot. Amen. Wonderful.